All right, we are still rolling right along here in the podcast series about the various self-publishing companies. Uh, who can we trust? Who can we trust? What do they have to offer? And can we utilize them? Because obviously Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing isn't the only game in town. Sure, they're pulling in 60% of the lion's share of profits around the world, but there's another 40% to be had on other platforms. And this is where it's got me to coming to these other more obscure platforms, ones that we haven't discussed too often. And today we're talking about one called Shenxi. That's spelled X-I-N-X-I-I. Shenxi is a German-based company. Are they really worth it? Are they going to be the one that you're going to want to check out? Well, we're going to talk about this KDP alternative in today's podcast recording. So make sure that you stay tuned. And as per usual, you know I'm going to have to do some shameless promotion here. Are you an aspiring author looking to share your stories with the world but need a little guidance? Look no further. The selfpublishinghub.com empowers writers like you to take charge of your publishing dreams without breaking the bank. It's a big deal to me because I know that there are a lot of these designer courses out there that charge anywhere from $800 to $3,000, and that's just ludicrous. You're an indie author. Ah, for just $9.99 per month, access my treasure trove of resources that include a step-by-step -step guidance. Navigate the self-publishing maze effortlessly with expert tips and tutorials. Community support. Hey, you can post questions and get answers within the comments directly from me. I take that stuff very seriously. And affordable excellence. Affordable's big thing here. No hefty price tags here, just quality videos to elevate your writing journey. It's not that you're getting any less from any of what I'm offering to you than what you're going to get in any other course. I just want to make it more affordable to you. Subscribe today and launch your author career into the stratosphere. Remember, it's the one, the only, the selfpublishinghub.com. All right, I'm kind of excited about today's broadcast, and for good reason, because I'm always on the lookout for great alternatives to Kindle Direct Publishing, and one of them is called Shin Shi. Now, I covered Shin Shi a couple times over the past few years, and I've even dabbled on their platform before with uh, really no results, but that's on me, though. Let's go ahead and talk about Shin Shi. Shin Shi is a German-based self-publishing platform tailored for indie authors, offering a range of services to help authors self-publish their works through eBooks and audiobooks since you're ready for this, 2008. They've been around for a while, man. They've been hanging in there. It's almost like they started right about the same time that KDP did or Smashwords did, and they've been hanging in there. So a fun fact, Shin Shi roughly translates to quote unquote information. I guess it's some Chinese, Chinese dialect. I, I'm not f familiar with which type. I just looked it up really fast because I'm like, what does that mean? It was fairly interesting to hear, hear a German-based company calling themselves a Chinese-based name, but uh, really cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's talk about ebooks and audiobooks available through their platform. Let's ebooks. The files that they accept include PDF, EPUB, DOCX, Doc, PowerPoint. Yeah, you can publish your freaking PowerPoint displays. Excel, Mobi, ODT, and RTF. Now they will convert all files to EPUB. So just a Fair warning, I see a lot of people that will upload to platforms like KDP um, or uh, draft a digital and they're bringing their document. And when they let that platform convert it to EPUB, the problem is that formatting is going to be stripped. It's going to be made exactly how they like to do it. So some of it's gonna be slightly off. Now, keep in mind that with reflowable content on an EPUB document, um, it's going to look different on various devices. So where it might look a certain way on say your DocX, it's going to look a completely different way as soon as it goes to EPUB because as soon as someone opens their device, it's going to cater to their needs. And that's really huge to me. Now, could you be able to do something like a Mobi uh, or uh, some type of a document that would be a fixed layout? Sure, but will they publish it? I don't know. Remains to be seen. Now, the max file size, you ready for this, is 80 megabytes. 80. Like, that's a lot. That, In fact, I used to do some of my fitness books would go up to like 40 megabytes. And that was with a lot of images, high quality. So chances of you hitting 80 megabytes are slim and none, just so you know. Now, here's where we get to how much you get in profits. It's 70% net profits. Now, I always say net profits because, well, Shinshi is an aggregate publishing platform, meaning that they're going to publish 
and distribute to various retailers on your behalf and collect a percentage of the profits that come back. Now with the agreement that they set up with each one of these retailers, they have a set percentage for each one of those. That's not 70%. It could probably be 70% for distribution to Amazon, but you get 70% of that 70% that's coming back through there. So that's how most aggregate publishing platforms work. Now the lowest you can price your eBooks on Shinshi is 99 cents can't go below it. So it's not like drafted digital where if you want to do a perma free book, meaning a permanently free ebook of some sort, won't work over on that platform. Now, in their words, to qualify for distribution, your ebook must be accepted to their premium catalog. The minimum criteria includes an ISBN, except for Amazon, Barnes and Noble and Casa del Libro, more about that in a minute, a proper copyright page, and quality book cover in JPEG format. Now, the requirements do not reflect a judgment of the quality, marketability, or topic of your specific ebook. So don't think that they're gonna be like going in and proofing your stuff. No, they just wanna make sure that it is going to be able to have the ISBN, if you want that expanded distribution that they have, actually, I don't think they think they call it extended distribution or global distribution. You have to have the copyright page and a quality book cover in JPEG format, which most people already do that. Now, they distribute ebooks without ISBN to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Casa, Casa del Libro. Now, if your book has an ISBN, they will ship additionally to Angus and Robertson, uh, Butch.de, Butcher.de, Der Club Bertelsmann, uh, Donaldlin.at, eCentral, Family Christian, Flipkart, FNAC, Google Books, Hugendoobel, the Apple Bookstore, actually they called it iBookstore, they need to catch up with stuff on that one, Indigo, Kobo, Libris, Livraria Cultura, Mondadari, I'm butchering all these, Auto Media, Rakuten, Scribd, Talia, Weltbuild, Whitcoles, and WH Smith. That is a deep list. Really, I mean, a lot. Some of them, clearly, I've never heard of them before, but you're reaching into some other nooks and crannies that some of these other aggregate publishing platforms don't necessarily reach. So if you're looking to go as wide as possible, Shinshi might be an option for you to consider. Now on Shinshi, you're able to choose your preferred ebook retailers individually. And that means that if you want to go to XYZ, you can go ahead and choose those ones. Now, you're also provided the ability to sell on your own Shinshi author page. That's kind of nice. So if for some reason you don't want that distribution and you want to just go with an author page on Shinshi, you can do that. Or you can have both if you want to. So it's really neat to see that you're getting a different platform than we're normally used to because we've talked about some of these aggregate publishing platforms. A few of them off the top of my head, Draft the Digital, Smashwords, uh, Street Lib, Publish Drive, a lot of those reach there. But I'm going to tell you that they have on Shin Shi very unique avenues that those other ones don't already reach. Now, speaking of not reaching other places, audiobooks. This is really nice. So if you're looking into the breaking into the world of audiobook publishing, then you could do it this way, but there's a little bit of an asterisk because in their words, they say, we charge a one-time distribution fee of about $29.99, actually, excuse me, $29.99 euro. That's including VAT tax. I just repeated myself, value-added tax tax. Uh, and uh, that's for checking, preparing, and delivering an audiobook. Now, if the total length is less than one hour, only a reduced flat rate of $22.99 is charged. Now, if the total length is more than 10 hours, the distribution flat rate is 49.99 euros. Now, over 20 to maximum of 30 hours length, that is about 7.99 euro. Now, invoicing takes place only after the upload has been checked by their distribution team. Now, they also offer different bundle prices for distribution fee. So if you've got three audiobooks, you can get a 15% discount. Six audiobooks, you get a 30% discount. And 10 audiobooks, they will happily negotiate something for, uh, for you. So if you're looking at taking your audiobooks elsewhere, definitely consider. Now, I've published an audiobook through them about a few years ago. 
and um, really haven't had any sales, but that's probably my own doing. I need to market some of those avenues and promote those avenues. That way people are aware of it. Uh, I'm going to test them. I want to play with them a little bit more. Now, the accepted file type is MP3. They don't accept WAV uh, files. It's essentially the same industry specs as other audiobook distributors out there. Now, you can select the specific retailers you want, but, big but here, streaming services is all or nothing. So they have some of them, and I think Spotify might be one of them that's on that list. I Sorry, it's eluding my brain right now, and I forgot to put some of those names down here. Um, but you have it all or nothing either way. So if you want the streaming services, great. They're like, hey, take it. But if you don't want them, you can go ahead and just deselect that one. Now, the retail price is honored that you set yourself, except for Audible. That tracks, though. Because the same thing happens if you're distributing through Findway Voices, going to Audible, or even through Publish Drive, going to Audible. Audible's always going to set your price for you based on the length. I know, it's stupid. I don't like it. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't want them sitting here telling me like, hey, you're going to have to get this much and we're going to give you 25% revenue on each one of them. And I'm sure it's probably how much you're getting because it's non-exclusive for Audible. So, of course, they're going to dip their hands in your pockets. So, just have that heads up. It's not Shin Shi's fault. It's something Audible puts in place. I anticipate and hope that that will change in due time. Now, they have just a little bit less of a profit that you do, say, through Find Away Voices or through something like Publish Drive, because it is 70% of net profits. And as I had mentioned before, based on whatever agreement deal that they have for the audiobook retailers, you're gonna be getting a 70% of whatever comes back in from those ones. Now, how does Shin Shi pay? Very simple, you have to have a minimum payment threshold of $20 or 20 euros, and they pay you out through PayPal or a European bank account. Uh, so, um, not the biggest fan of that one, I would ideally like to have a direct deposit to mine, but chances are very likely maybe that um, international bank accounts probably costs more for them to have to deal with and probably more of a headache. Now, they also pay you 30 days after the close of the month. Not bad. Boy, we are trucking along on this one here. This is not going to be a long broadcast at all when it comes to Shin Shi. Now, miscellaneous things to kind of take note of. Ally, the Alliance of Independent Authors, has something called the Watchdog Services. Now, this is an organization that's run by indie authors for indie authors, and they rate a lot of these things, and they aren't paid to do this. They are giving their 100% honest feedback on some of the faults and problems they see with it. And Ally more recently downgraded the recommendation that they had for Shin Shi to a caution rating. Now, they're not telling you to go away from it, but what they specifically say is, we have received multiple reports of failure to respond to customer inquiries. Based on this unresponsiveness, we are downgrading Shin Shi to a caution rating. This tracks because I've reached out to Shin Shi a couple of times, actually twice via email and once via social media, and they don't respond. And you know, I'm not sure if that's how they like to do business or maybe they're just kind of buried in work. Who knows? Um, Ally also shared, uh, or excuse me, AI. Uh, I said Ally, I meant to say AI. I had searched up artificial intelligence uh, through Google, had shared how the company is headquartered in Berlin, Germany, and has five employees. Now, is there any truth to that? I don't know. I tried to confirm, tried to find somewhere. It, it it might explain the lack of communication if it's five employees, because if they've got thousands of account holders and they're having to respond to everybody, I'm sure they're probably cherry picking what they can probably respond to, or maybe they've just given up altogether, who knows. Now, will StreetLib acquire this company too? This is a bit of a callback to the last episode that I had this previous week about BookRix, because BookRix is also another European-based company that StreetLib ended up acquiring last year and started to integrate with their platform this year in 2024. So uh, it makes me kind of wonder, is StreetLib going to eventually go over, reach out to them? I mean, I, this is not saying anything bad. I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but it seems to me if Shin Shi is probably 
buried in work and unable to handle a lot of that stuff, maybe StreetLib can come in and fix them. I have no inside intel. That's merely a callback to the last episode that we had. All right. Hey, uh, folks, as we start to wrap things up, I'm going to give you my final thoughts on Shin Shi, and it's not what you think it's going to be. Subscribe to my premium video on demand service, theselfpublishinghub.com, to get access to exclusive videos and courses you won't find anywhere else for only $9.99 per month. Subscribe when you like, cancel when you want. Hey, you know what? Look, if you wanted to binge watch, gosh, nearly 200 videos in the course of one month and just shut it down, I'm fine with that. A lot of people are like, ah, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel right doing that. Do it. Honestly, I literally made it available like that. So you could be able to binge it and just go ahead and cancel it whenever you want to. I would like for you to stay on. I do put out a new video every week on that platform. And I do have some new courses in the works that are going to roll out later into 2024. So again, that's the one, the only, the selfpublishinghub.com. Here are my final thoughts. Shenshi seems to be a platform worth considering if you've already looked into other options beyond KDP. My only hesitation is the communication. Now, the dashboard seems like it needs a little bit of an overhaul, but otherwise it's fairly intuitive. It's not so old and outdated that I'm like, oh gosh, it's terrible. I discovered some wonkiness in the pricing feature because I went through and I tried to change the pricing on my audiobook and for whatever reason, it just changed the price up on me. I was like, what are you doing? I asked $6.99 and it gave me $7.59, but I'll probably reach out to support to see if I can resolve that issue. It could be just a user error and that's on me. So beyond that, I'm exercising a wait and see approach to Shen Shi. Maybe they will pan out. Maybe they won't. It's clear they aren't going anywhere, having been in the self-publishing business for over 16 years, since 2008. I mean, gosh, they're hanging in there. Hey, folks, as we start to wrap up today's podcast here, I just want to give you a heads up. I'll be out of the office next week, but we'll return to business as usual the week after next on April 8th, when we'll be talking about Tableau book publishing. Is Tableau worth it? Oh, we're going to talk about Tableau. It's definitely a very interesting self-publishing platform, rife with some issues. And uh, we're going to find out more about that in the week after next episode. So in the meantime, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will catch you guys the week after next.